Hey there, welcome to another episode from my F101 Voodoo series where I'm building a Voodoo fighter in Blender and I periodically take a few minutes out of the project to talk about some portion of the project that I'm currently working on. Uh, so right now I'm working on the forward instrument panel and I thought I'd take a couple minutes out to talk about the clock animation, getting the clock to actually work on the dashboard. Uh, to follow along with this tutorial you're going to need Animation Nodes add-on, which is a free download. There's a link down below, but it's animationnodes.com. Uh, you would go here, click on the download, and just install it like you would any other Blender add-on. And then once it's installed, you'll see this Animation Nodes option right there. You can do that to create a window for your Animation Nodes. So I'm going to bring this down. We can see our clock here. we got our timeline here. And we have an empty Animation Nodes editor here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to create an Object Input node. This is going to tell the... Uh, editor which object we're looking at and you can just use this little eyedropper here and I'm going to pick the second hand from there. So now that now Blender knows that uh, everything I'm working on here is working on the second hand and we want to be able to rotate that object around which means we're going to need the object transform output node. Transforms output. So you can see this has some options. This is for moving, rotating, and scaling. And you just take the object output of the object input node and stick it into there. So just kind of, you know, black dot to black dot. And we want to move our uh, this second hand along the Y axis. So I'm going to choose the Y button there. And if I rotate this, if I scroll, if I, you know, scrub through my Y thing, you can see how that, that second hand is moving. So now we just need to figure out a way to animate that, that portion of it. Well, obviously we want to tie this to the timeline, so we're going to need some information about where we are in the timeline. And fortunately, there is a node called Time Info. Put that here, and this is just going to give you the frame number, but we need to convert that into seconds. And I'm recording at 24 frames per second, so if I take the frames, divide by 24, that'll be the number of seconds. So I can use a math node. Put that in here. I'm going to take the frame, stick it in here, divide by 24. And one of the cool things about the animation editor is if you hit the W key, if I select a node and I hit W, I get a pie menu that gives me some options. I'm going to choose viewer. I'm going to stick this right here. And what this is doing is it's telling me the current value here. So it's really nice for debugging. So if I scroll through here now, you can see how this value changes as it goes along. And I want this to be divide. Right? So we're at zero, we're at basically zero seconds, and then I go to second 24, which is one second, or sorry, I go to frame 24, which is one second. You can see now the viewer is 24. If I go to 48, it'll be two, etc. All right, so that's kind of cool. I, like, I love this debugger feature. Uh, next thing we want to do is we want to rotate the second hand six degrees every one second, right? So it's going to go 360 degrees. So each one of these tick marks is six degrees. So I can take another math node, just duplicate this guy, I guess. And we want to take the output of this, put it in here, multiply it by six. And hit W again, just to keep our debugging stuff going. And if I go to the first second, you can see that I'm at six degrees. So that'll be just one tick mark there. Now you would think that you'd be able to just take this six degrees and stick it in here, um, but you can't really, because uh, the animation node wants this combined Euler node between the two of these, and it's it's going to put it in there by default, which is nice, um, but it's going to put it on the X. We want it on the Y. Uh, you can see that doesn't really work, that it goes too far, and that's because uh, this is this is expecting a radian input, and this is in degrees, so we need to convert. Uh, between six degrees and the radian value. Uh, a couple ways we could do that. You could, if you want, there's a convert node where I can take that and the convert angle is what we want really. Convert angle, it's going to take degrees, degrees to radian, and then if I put a, let's put a W here just to see what's happening. So you can see that that's converting the six degrees to 0.104 radians. And then that goes into the Euler and our second hand moved, but it moved backwards one. So we just want to make this negative one. And there you go. So you can see that as we scrub through here, our second hand is going to move 
along there. And if we wanted to kind of double check, it'd say 24 frames times 30, should be 30 seconds. It should put us right at the six. It does, so that's good. It seems to be working. It'll give me 30 seconds exactly. Uh, another way you could do that is if you didn't want to do the convert angle, uh, you could if you wanted to just convert it yourself. So I could take the, um, let's do it this way, duplicate this one. And instead of multiplying it by just negative six, multiply by negative six and then do the pi divided by 180. So pi divided by 180, just to scroll, oops, let me just scroll in here so you can see it better. So you could say negative six times pi divided by 180. That'll convert the degrees to radians as well. Um, and you'll see that if I do a W here, put it up there, I get the same values. So 0, 4, 3, 6. So you could either do it manually or uh, using the convert option. Um, this might be a little faster. It's one less step, I guess, because you're kind of creating a, maybe a constant there. Um, either way, this is a little, maybe may perhaps a little more readable. Um, we'll just use the convert, your choice. Right now we need to get the minute hand to move. So we can just duplicate this guy, this guy, this guy. Move it down here. We already know the angles, right? Because we're going to base all, we're going to base the minute and hour rotation off of the second hand. I'm going to move this here. I'm going to duplicate my math node. And we want the minute hand to move at 1 60th the speed of the second hand. So I can divide by 60. And then that gets plugged into the Y wire. But we need to change the you know the object here. So I'm going to clear that out and then choose my minute hand. You see that reset that and as we scrub through, let me make this a little bigger. You can see my minute hand starts to move now. It's moving at 1 60th the speed of the second hand, which is kind of cool. And then we're going to do something similar for the hour hand. I'm going to duplicate all this. And of course, the, the hour hand also moves at 1 60th the speed of the minute hand. So we move this over here. And then we take the speed of the minute hand and use that to multiply uh, to get the hour hand to move. And I just need to clear this. And I need to choose my hour hand. And yeah, that should work now. Let me add some more time here. Okay, really long, and then if I scrub through here, we should see, start to see the hour hand move as well. So now the clock's working. Um, another thing you could do if you wanted to is right now the second hand is a sweep hand. It just, you see, it just you know moves smoothly from second to second. Some clocks do that. Another thing you could do though, if you wanted, if you wanted to be kind of like that ticking snap that goes, you know, that some clocks do. We can add a, a math snap function to this. I'm going to put that right here, I think. So look under search, and it's under math. I could have just duplicated a math node. And then in here, you want to look for the snap function, which is right here. I'm going to set this to 1, and I'm going to just stick this right in here. And then if we watch the second hand go, it's going to go snap, tick, tick, tick. Tick. So you get that ticking thing for the second hand. It's not going to affect these two here. They're going to they're going to move more smokes move more smoothly. It really is just the second hand that's going to tick. Everything else is going to flow after that. And um, maybe just one other thing you might want to do to this is you might want to be able to start your clock at some other time. Like right now, the clock starts at you know midnight or twelve in the afternoon. So if I move these this way and I add another math node in here. And I'm just going to call. I'm going to hit F2. I'm going to start time, so we know what it is, and it's going to be a, a, a an add because we're going to add a certain number of seconds because this is starting on frame 24. And the clock starting at you know basically time zero. Uh, if I stick this in here, you can see that doesn't affect it. But if I put in you know like some big number, you can see how that moves the clock forward ahead. So if you wanted to do like um, 24 second, 24 frames times you know 5,000 seconds. You know that would be 20 after six. And then if you ran your clock simulation, the simulation would run starting at 20 after six. All right, I think that's it for making the clock work. Um, it's pretty uh, short work inside of animation nodes. Um, hope that was helpful. I will see you in another lesson.
Thank you. Bye.